Greetings, everybody. This is going to be Angels Part 7. We're going to turn to Numbers Chapter 22. But first, in John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. So, with that out of the way, let's go to Numbers chapter 22. Perhaps some of you have heard this lesson um, in Sunday school. It's been a long time since I've read this. I remember it, but it's been a long time since I've read it on my own. And I've never covered this in a Bible study. So, without further ado, let's read verse 1. Oh, a little background. Children of Israel came out of Egypt, and they've been conquering the promised land. And some of the tribes of the promised land, some of the Canaanites, are extremely unhappy because, well, Israel's having too much success against their neighboring sister tribes, so to speak. So this evil Canaanite king wants to hire a prophet to curse Israel. And this is the story. Verse 1. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab, on this side Jordan, by Jericho. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw that all that Israel had done to the Amorites. So Israel had uh, done, uh, defeated the Amorites. And Moab was sore afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And of course, when you got God on your side, how can you lose, right? Well, as long as Israel was faithful and true, the Lord fought for them. But that didn't last that long. Verse 4. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us, as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers therefore unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pethor. Now, Balaam was a prophet. And I believe he was one of God's prophets. All right, so he sent messengers, therefore, unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. Curse me this people. So, this king wanted Balaam to curse Israel. Curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I wot that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. What is divination? Witchcraft. Satanism, sorcery. Uh, the word divination comes from the word divine. You know, you, you've heard... Uh, you have heard that old saying, to err is human. Well, err is with, where the word error comes from. To err is humor, human, to forgive divine. Uh, divine has reference to godlike. 
So just, you know, keep that in mind. So divination has reference to the occult. All right, so, and the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. And they came unto Balaam and spake unto him the words of Balak. And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as the Lord shall speak unto me, and the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. Now listen to this. And God came unto Balaam and said, What men are these with thee? What men are these with thee? Uh, you know what? When I took uh, legal studies in college, I actually had an attorney for a, an instructor. And the attorney, I, re I remember this. I don't remember if it was a he or a she, but I remember the saying. It said, a good prosecuting attorney, or a defense attorney for that matter, will never ask a question to a witness that they do not already know the answer to. And that's what God's doing here. And God came into Balaam and said, What men are these with thee? You know, like God doesn't know, right? And Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zippor, the king of Moab, hath sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from, uh, of Egypt, which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them, peradventure I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuseth to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balak, and said, Balaam refuseth to come with us. And Balak sent again, uh, and Balak sent yet again princes more and more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus saith Balak, the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me, for I will promote thee unto very great honor, and I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. Now therefore I pray you, tarry, here, uh, tarry also here this night, that I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. Huh? God already told you, dude. He said, don't go with them. So, you're going to ask him again? What, you didn't understand the first time? Really? What is, thou shalt not go with them? Uh, what does that mean? I guess Balak's hoping God will change his mind. All right. Verse 20. And God came into Balaam at night and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them, but yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shalt thou do. Hmm. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. So, you know, God already told him, don't go with them. But, you know, he's got his heart set on going with these guys because he wants the bucks. Let's face it, people. And he's not going to get little green pieces of paper, worthless pieces of paper with president's pictures printed on it. No, he's going to get gold and silver and livestock. 
verse 22. And God's anger was kindled because he went. Um, sort of like, you know, guys, when you got a serious girlfriend or a wife and um, she tells you not to do something the first time and then, you know, the second time you go back and you say, you know, I, I think I'm going to go do this. And then she cocks her head, puts her hand on her waist and looks at you kind of sideways and says, go ahead. She's not telling you it's okay. She's telling you, oh, oh yeah, you, you're going to do this? You're, you, okay, you, you go ahead and do this, but you're going to pay for it. Trust me. So, yeah, in my 60-something years, I've learned a couple things about the gals. If I ever get them figured out, I'm going to write a book and be a multi-millionaire, but uh, I don't think that's ever going to happen because I'm not that smart. And uh, and I don't know a lot about women because I am uh, did things right. I know a lot about women because I did a lot of things wrong. I learned the hard way. Well, guys, that's what Balaam is doing here. God told him don't go. And, uh, you know, he wanted to do it anyways. His heart was set on it. So he wanted the wages more than he wanted the things of God. So let's read verse 22. And God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary. Ooh. If memory serves me correctly, that word adversary is where they get the word Satan from. If memory serves me, it's either Satan or the devil. I think it's Satan. So the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an Satan against him, basically. Now he was riding upon his ass and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way and his sword sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field, and Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. So the ass was smarter than Balaam. It it you know went around the angel off the beaten path. So Verse 24, but the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall. Oh, hold on a second here. All right, so verse 24, but the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself unto the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. Ah. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, what have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? Huh. And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in my hand, for now would I kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, Am not I thine ass upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever wont to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way and his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? 
Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. Because thy way is perverse before thee. And the ass saw me and turned from me these three times. And unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee and saved her alive. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. Wow. That, now those are actually words that the Lord loves to hear. Those are the three most words that the Lord loves to hear. Trust me, I have sinned, for I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displease thee, I will get me back again. And the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, Go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that thou shalt speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. And when Balak heard that Balaam was come, he went out to meet him unto a city of Moab, which is in the border of Arnon, which is in the utmost coast. And Balak said unto Balaam, Did I not earnestly send unto thee to call thee? Therefore comest thou not unto me? Am I not able indeed to promote thee to honor? And Balaam said unto Balak, Lo, I am come unto thee. Have I now any power at all to say anything? The word that God putteth in my mouth, that shall I speak. And Balaam went unto Balak, and they came unto Kerjath Huzoth. And Balak, Balak offered oxen and sheep, and sent to Balaam, and to the princes that were with him. And it came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam and brought him up into the high places of Baal, or Baal, B-A-A-L. Uh, it's a generic word that means Lord. And it became so entrenched with Satanism that uh, the Lord said, don't call me that anymore. And brought him up into the high places of Baal, Baal, that, there, that thence he might see the utmost part of the people. So I guess he went up into a mountain side and he's looking down at Israel. Okay. Now in Hosea 2.16, And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me, saith the Lord, thou sh that thou shalt call me Ishai, and shalt call me no more Baalai. See, he didn't like that name. Verse 17, Hosea 2.17, the next verse. For I will take away the names of Balaam out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by that name. All right, chapter 23. And Balaam, the prophet, said unto to Balak, the king, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken, and Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. Now, think about this. Are they offering these to the God of heaven, or are they offering these to the devil? And Balaam said unto Balak, Stand by thy burnt offerings, and I will go. Peradventure, the Lord will come to meet me, and whatsoever he showeth me, I will tell thee. And he went to an high place. And God met Balaam, and he said unto him, I have prepared seven altars, and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return unto Balak, and thus thou shalt speak. And he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice, he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up his parable and said, Balak, 
the king of Moab hath brought me from Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse me, Jacob, and come, defy Israel. How can I curse whom God hath not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord hath not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob, and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous, and let my last end be like his. And Balak said unto Balaam, what hast thou done unto me? I took thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast blessed them altogether. And he answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak that which the Lord hath put in my mouth? And Balak said unto him, Come, I pray thee, with me unto another place, from whence thou mayest see them, that thou shalt see them but the uttermost part of them, and shalt not see them all and curse me them from thence. Now, I'm not sure exactly the angle here, but, uh, you know, they had, uh, in these days, they had, you know, this God was the God of this mountain, and then they had another God that was God of that mountain, and then you had another God of this valley. Uh, so maybe that's what, that's what it is. I don't know. Perhaps. So, and he brought him into the field of Zophim to the top of Pisgah and built seven altars and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. And he said unto Balak, Stand here by thy burnt offering while I meet the Lord yonder. And the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth and said, Go again unto Balak and say thus. Okay. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering, and the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, What hath the Lord spoken? And he took up his parable and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall it not be? Make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brought them up, uh, I'm sorry, God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. Uh, now, I want to make a, a little thing here. You know, today, uh, when you think about unicorns because of the world, uh, they got a picture of a horse probably with sprinkles and a rainbow behind it, and it's, this horse has got a horn coming out of its head. Eh, well, that's the New Age unicorn. But you know what a unicorn is? And I actually did a video on this. A unicorn is an Asian rhino. You've got an Asian rhino, off, sometimes called the Indian rhino, and then you've got the African rhino. The African rhino's got two horns. The Asian rhino, the Indian rhino, has one horn. And its actual name is Unicornis rhinoceros or rhinoceros. Uni means one. So it's the one horned rhinoceros. And uh, India. Have you ever seen, uh, they also have elephants too. You got Asian elephants and African elephants. An African elephant will stomp you to death. But an Indian elephant, oh, those are the ones that are in India and like Thailand and what have you. And 
They teach them at a very young age to do work. Um, perhaps you've seen people doing tiger hunting in India and people are riding on the top of the elephants. Well, those are Asian elephants. And uh, they're a totally different temperament than an African elephant. Well, the um, Asian rhinos have a single horn. And look it up. Their name is Unicornus rhinoceros. Unicorn is. So when they're talking about a unicorn, they're talking about probably a rhino, an Asian rhino. And they're strong. You don't want to mess with one of them. They can, <laughs> they can flip a car over if they smash into it. So, verse, okay, so uh, God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, What hath God wrought? Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion, and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink the blood of the slain. And Balak said unto Balaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. But Balaam answered and said unto Balak, Told not I thee, saying, All that the Lord speaketh, that I must do? And Balak said unto Balaam, Come, I pray thee, I will bring thee unto another place. Peradventure, it will please God that thou mayest curse me them from thence. And Balak brought Balaam unto the top of Peor, which that looked toward Jeshimum. And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven bullocks and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had said, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. Chapter 24. All right, verse 1. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not as at other times to seek for enchantments, but he set his face toward the wilderness. And Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes, and the Spirit of God came upon him. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam the son of Beor hath said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said, He hath said, which heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty, falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. How goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel! As the valleys are, they spread forth, as gardens by the river's side, as the trees of L-I-G-N, aloes. That must be a type of aloe. Ligne, aloes, which the Lord hath planted, and as cedar trees beside the waters. He shall pour the water out of his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters, and his king shall shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. God brought him forth out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. He shall eat up the nations, his enemies, and shall break their bones and pierce them through with his arrows. Let's take a little sidetrack here. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 5. I want to go on, help you understand arrows in the Bible. Verse Ezekiel 5, 5. Thus saith the Lord God, This is Jerusalem. I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. Now you got to understand something. Uh, basically, the land of Jerusalem and Israel is like basically in the middle of the crossroads of Asia, Asia Minor, Africa, and Europe. And the, 
the ways uh, all the all the the way the topography of the land is I mean the way the, the land is set up uh, it's like a crossroads so there was always armies going through the area and I think the Lord did that on purpose so all right I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her and she hath changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations and my statutes more than the countries that are round about her in other words she became even more evil than her evil wicked neighbors for they have refused my judgments and my statutes they have not walked in them therefore thus saith the lord god because ye multiplied more than the nations that are round about you and have not walked in my statutes neither have kept my judgments neither have done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you therefore thus saith the lord god behold i even i am against thee and will execute judgments in the midst of thee in the sight of the nations And I will do in thee that which I had not done, and whereunto I will not do any more the like, because of all thine abominations. If you don't know what an abomination is, that's something that God really, 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 really hates. Really hates. Therefore the father shall eat the sons in the midst of thee, and the sons shall eat their fathers, and I will execute judgments in thee, and the whole remnant of thee will I scatter into all the winds. Cannibalism, people. Wherefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, surely, because thou hast defiled my sanctuary with all the detestable things, and with all thine abominations, therefore will I also diminish thee, neither shall mine eye spare neither will I have any pity. Here's the punchline. A third part of thee shall die with the pestilence, disease, and with famine shall they be consumed in the midst of thee, and a third part shall fall by the sword, war, round about thee and i will scatter a third part into all the winds and i will draw a sword after them thus shall mine anger be accomplished and i will cause my fury to rest upon them and i will be comforted and they shall know that i am the lord hath spoken it in my zeal when i have accomplished my fury in them moreover i will make thee waste in a reproach among the nations now this word nations is the it, it's the same word that they translate as Gentiles. Sometimes the word is nations, sometimes they translate the word as Gentiles, but it's the same word. Um, just keep that in mind. Sometimes they're talking about the nations of Israel, sometimes they're talking about the heathen nations, um, and oftentimes that's when they use the word Gentiles. When they told Abraham he would be the father of many nations, you know, it wouldn't, I don't know, you know, it, it would have sounded right if they just said, uh, Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of many Gentiles. So they use the word nations. But keep that in mind. It's the same word. Sometimes people get the wrong idea uh, when they read the word Gentile. You know, modern day usage they think it means non-Jew. Well, it doesn't mean that. Sometimes it might mean non-Israel, but not always. All right? I mean, look at the word gay. In the 1920s, to be gay meant to be happy. Today it means you're a sodomite. Popular usage. So, moreover, I will make thee waste in a reproach among the nations that are round about thee in the sight of all that pass by. So it shall be a reproach and a taunt, an instruction and an astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee, when I shall execute judgments 
in thee in anger and in fury and in furious rebukes. I, the Lord, hath spoken it. Verse 16, here's the punchline. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine. Well, what happens when you get hit with an arrow? Chances are you're going to die, right? The evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you, and I will break your staff of bread. So will I send upon you famine and evil beast. Are these beasts four-legged beasts? Are they two-legged beasts? And they shall bereave thee, and pestilence and blood shall pass through thee, and I will bring the sword upon thee. I, the Lord, have spoken it. So, arrows, famine. Think about that. All right, let's go back to Numbers 24 and verse 8. God brought him forth out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. He shall eat up the nations, his enemies, and shall break their bones and pierce them through with his arrows. He couched, he lay down as a lion, and as a great lion, who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesseth thee, and cursed is he that curseth thee. And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he smote his hands together, and Balak said unto Balaam, I called thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast altogether blessed them these three times. Therefore now flee thou to thy place. I thought to promote thee unto great honor, but lo, the Lord hath kept thee back from honor. And Balaam said unto Balak, Spake I not also to thy messengers that which thou sent, sentest unto me, saying, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the command of the Lord to do either good or bad of mine own mind. But what the Lord saith, that will I speak. All right, verse 14. And now behold, I go unto my people. Come therefore, and I will advertise thee what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. In other words, I'm going to tell you what Israel is going to do to you people in the end times. And he took up this parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, hath said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said, he hath said, which heard the words of God and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob. A star out of Jacob. Keep that in mind. There shall come a star out of Jacob. And uh, remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Jacob and Israel are synonyms or synonymous. It means the same thing. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Now, what's a scepter? Uh, it's like a like a short staff, and it's uh, something that kings hold. That's what a scepter is. I think they use that for, um, if I remember correctly, they use that to make seals on orders and stuff. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Now, who was the king tribe? Judah. Where was Christ from? The king of kings, the Lord of lords. He was, arose out of Judah. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth. Now, who is a star arising out of Jacob? Well, the answer to that is Revelation 22, verse 16. 
I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. Now remember, David was of Judah. He was a king. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So Jesus is the morning star. So let's go back to Numbers 24. Verse 17, we'll read it again. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheph. And Edom shall be a possession. Uh, Esau was also called Edom, and he lives in Mount Seir. So, and Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion. The word dominion is where we get the word dominate. And shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. Wow. And your demon nominational churches will tell you that, well, you know, now that's not really what God wants, you know, now Jesus comes and he loves everybody. And who was Amalek? Amalek was a grandson of Esau, Edom. They were the ones that attacked Israel. Uh, they attacked Israel. They attacked the rear of the army marching. Now, I don't know if you know it, but the when you have a a large number of people marching or moving you know the uh the elderly and the cripple are going to be in the back well what did El, what did amalek do they attacked the rear where all the elderly and the crippled people and the young were instead of showing israel kindness they attacked them but you got to remember, Esau married Hittite, Canaanite women. They were of the satanic seed line. It's not popular, but it's true. And if you want, you can take a look at my playlist and you can read The Angels That Sinned by uh, Clifton Fowler with some comments and notes from me. But... Uh, you study that for a few hours, and there, you, you come to the inescapable conclusion that Genesis 6, the fallen angels interbred with the women before the flood and after the flood. That's why you had Goliath the giant. I'm sorry, but believers and unbelievers do not get married and have giants for children. Well, maybe they do, and they're playing for the NBA, right? But I don't think so. So, what did God say about Amalek? Let's take a look. What does God feel about Amalek? Uh, real simple. Exodus chapter 17 and verse 16. For he saith, because the Lord hath sworn, the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek. What? The Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. But the churches will tell you, well, you know, that was until Jesus comes. Now Jesus wants to give everybody salvation. Jesus loves everybody. I don't think so. But if you want to believe that dribble, go for it. All right. But his latter end shall be that he perish forever. 
And he looked on the Kenites and took up his parable and said, Strong is thy dwelling place, and thou puttest thy nest in a rock. Nevertheless, the Kenites shall be wasted until Asher shall carry thee away captive. And he took up his parable and said, Alas, who shall live when God doeth this? And ships shall come from the coast of Chittim, and shall afflict, afflict Asher, and shall afflict Eber. And he also shall perish forever. And Balaam rose up and went and returned to his place. And Balak also went his way. All right, let's go to Numbers chapter 25. And we're getting ready, we're getting ready to close out this, this uh, Bible study. And as Israel abode, abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. Now, these obviously were mixed with the Canaanites. And they called the people unto the sacrifice of their gods, plural. And the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor. Remember the Mount Peor? Baal means Lord. So basically they're saying Lord of the mountain here. So... When you read about the high places, they were sacrificing unto the high places. Sometimes uh, they were sacrificing unto the devils. So what happened? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his man that were joined unto Baal Peor. Listen to this. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought up unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses, and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So here it is. Um, one of the one of the guys found himself a probably a hot looking young Canaanite woman, Midianitish woman, in the sight of Moses, while they're weeping before the door of the altar of the congregation. And when Phineas the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest. Now, I guess uh, Phineas here is a grandson of Aaron, the brother of Moses. And when Phineas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. If you don't know what a javelin is, it's a, it's a throwing spear. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. He speared, he got two, a two for one there. What do you think the man was doing to her? He was probably on top of her. So Phineas took the javelin and put it through both their bellies while they were, I guess, enjoying themselves. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly, so the plague was stayed from the children of Israel, and those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, hath turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, while he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consumed not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Wherefore say, Behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace, and he shall have it, and his seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. The Phineas priesthood is going to be a covenant of an everlasting priesthood because he was zealous for his God and made an atonement for the children of Israel. That's what, uh, yeah. Now, 
they tried to get this prophet to curse Israel, but he blessed them. So, how come this was a problem? Or why are they messing around with these satanic hybrids? Well, let's take a look. All right, what uh, what was this thing that um, this prophet of God? What did uh, did he uh, was he responsible for any of this stuff? Well, let's take a look at the Second Peter chapter two, and we're going to read I guess the whole chapter. It's not that long, but um, he had something to do with this. Now there are people that will tell you that Second Peter is doesn't belong in the bible because uh, the second letter of peter confirms paul as a brother in christ so there's a lot of people especially in the hebrew roots so-called and sacred name movement that'll tell you oh no second peter is no good it doesn't belong in the bible well i tell you what let's read it Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1. But there were false prophets. Isn't that basically what Balaam was? But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily, privately, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction and many shall follow their pernicious ways pernicious has reference to uh, secretly hidden kind of thing and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of yeah you start telling people that uh the Edomites are going to be destroyed and there's no salvation for them. Boy, I'll tell you what, the Baptist churches will jump on you. Oh, God, God loves everybody. He wants everybody to be saved. Yeah, I've actually had people tell me that God's going to eventually save Satan himself. Believe it or not, they teach that. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness their greed. They shall with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And spared not the old world. Isn't that funny? In one breath, they're talking about God not sparing the angels that sinned. And then in the next breath, they're saying, And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. There you have it, people. God, God tells you what happened and, you know, what was going on with Noah. And then the next uh, breath. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Condemn them with an overthrow, making them an, an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. And deliver just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked for that righteous man dwelleth among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds the lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government presumptuous are they self-willed and are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, 
which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. Again, uh, before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart that has exercised with covetous practices, cursed children." Listen carefully. Cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following, following the way of Balaam, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Didn't we just read about him? which are forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumbass, speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. I know a lot of dumbass, but this dumbass was speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet, these are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome of the same as he brought in bondage. If after they had escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they had known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow, the pig, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. You could take a pig and you could baptize it, but guess what? It's going to go back to the mud. The mire happens every time. All right, let's read the book of Jude. This ties back in too. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James. To them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Did you know that there were men that crept in unaware who were of old ordained to condemnation? Ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Haven't you ever heard people say that, uh, well, for example, people that teach eternal security I've actually heard people say, well, you know, because of eternal security, once you say a sinner's prayer for 30 seconds, 
no matter what you do, God will never throw you into hell. And then people turn that into a license to sin, and they do whatever they want to do. I mean, they live even more wickedly than the, the heathen. And I, that's what I think they're talking about here. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance that ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels, ah, here's those angels again. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. The next breath, even as Sodom and Gomorrah. Ah. Here it is, we're talking about the angels which kept not their first estate. And now we're talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, just like we did in Second Peter, right? Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. Wouldn't angel flesh and human flesh be strange flesh? And going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Now, we're still talking about angels here in verse 9. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke me, uh, rebuke thee. Not me, thee. The Lord rebuke thee. Now, if you want to know why the devil was disputing about the body of Moses, I did a Bible study on it. Verse 10. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and what was Cain's sin? Murder, right? And ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward. Isn't that what Balaam did? He ran greedily. He wanted, he wanted, uh, he didn't want to listen to the Lord. He wanted that gold and silver, huh? And ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Cory. Uh, Cory was a, I think he was a Levite, and he challenged Moses' authority. Actually, he was challenging God's authority. And uh, God had the earth open up like an earthquake and swallow him and his people, and then it, the earth closed up on him. So... Uh, that was the end of the uh, Cory. Uh, I think it was Korah. Verse 12. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees who fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead. Why twice dead? They're dead physically and they're dead spiritually plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of thee, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because 
of advantage. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you that there should be mockers, mockers in the last time, who would walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and if some have compassion, making a difference. And other save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. All right, so this right here is going to be um, this last scriptures are going to be the uh, the end, but um, this will explain what Balaam did. Balaam didn't just you know he blessed Israel, but he did something very bad. So let's read Revelation chapter two and verse twelve. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write. These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. Even where Satan's seat is, Satan's throne? Boy, talk about a rough neighborhood, huh? You know where Pergamos is today? In a country that's called Turkey used to be called the Ottoman Empire. Before that, it was called Greece. Before these, before all those peaceful Muslims invaded and killed all the Greeks and took the country over. Yeah. So Pergamos is now in Turkey. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. See, people, there are martyrs for Christ. Uh, Pre-tribbers will try to convince you that uh, this is God's wrath. No. Satan's wrath is different than God's wrath. Read the book of Job chapter 1 sometime. Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Ah, the doctrine of Balaam. This is the punchline, people. The doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak, remember that he was the king. Balak, Balaam was the prophet, and Balak was the king. Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Ah, so, see, Balaam couldn't, con- couldn't curse Israel, so what did he do? He taught the evil king to put a, a, like a brick in their path so that they would trip over it and fall down. He taught them to eat things sacrificed unto idols, to the false gods, And then he taught them to commit fornication with these satanic hybrid women. Remember Phineas, the Midianitish woman, that he took the man and took the javelin and put the put the the spear through both their bellies? Yeah. Now we know what he did. Now we know what Balaam 
did. He taught the king how to, he couldn't, Balaam couldn't curse Israel, but he taught Balak what he had to do to have the Lord get angry with Israel. And, you know, there are so many false religions in the United States. I mean, tons of them. you got the Jehovah's Witnesses. You've got the Mormons. Um, even longtime churches that used to be fairly solid. I mean, they're teaching heresies now. It's just unbelievable. And to commit fornication with the um, with the heathens. They're more than just heathens. They're they were uh, satanic hybrids, and they're everywhere. You want to see the satanic hybrids in action? Turn on your television. Go to the movies. Turn on the awards for Hollywood, the Oscars, the you know all those things. And there you go. So, I hope you learned something. So this is uh, Chaplain Bob signing off. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen. <laughs>